Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. Um, I hope you had a good weekend. Um, in today's lesson, we're going to carry on with inverse functions. If you recall on Friday, we spoke about what functions were, and we said that the definition of a function was basically, oh my word, I just realized that I'm not actually, sorry, that, <laughs> that a function is basically something that has for every x value there is one and only one y value for every x value this is one and only one y value okay so then we started talking about inverse functions and we said that okay fine to find an inverse function what do you do you swap x and y and then solve for y okay that's what we're going to that's what we learned so what we're going to do today is we're going to do a whole bunch of examples and then look at what happens to domain and ranges etc etc so let's get started with a fairly easy one the inverse of a straight line so it says draw the following graph stating its domain and range so you got f of x where y is 3x plus 2 so we know it goes through a positive 2 goes through positive 2 Okay, to find out, we know that because of the fact that the C, C cut, which is the y-intercept, is 2. To find out where it cuts the x-axis, we're going to let y equal naught. So we're going to go 0 is equal to 3x plus 2. So minus 2 is equal to 3x. So x is equal to minus 2 over 3. So that's minus 2 thirds. So that's about over here. And we really are drawing a straight line just coming along like this. And I apologize for the fact that I cannot draw perfectly straight lines on the software. Now let's talk about the domain and range. Your domain is where the graph stretches across the x-axis, okay? And the range is where it crosses, stretches across the y-axis. And I know that some students struggle to remember the difference between domain and range. The way I remember it is that the range has got a little g with a down arm, okay, a little leg, and the y-axis has got a little leg, whereas domain has no legs and neither does the x-axis. So that's the way that I remember it. So range is y and domain is x. So we want to know what is the domain and range for this graph, okay? So do you agree the domain is basically going to be x as an element of real numbers. It is going to stretch from minus infinity all the way to positive infinity. This line goes on and on forever this way and on and on forever that way. So you could also say that x, sorry, let's write it like this, x is going to be smaller than positive infinity and bigger than negative infinity. But just x is an element of real numbers. Similarly, range y is going to be an element of real numbers. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Now it says find the inverse of x, draw it and state the domain and range. Okay, so how do you find the inverse? Remember what I said, we swap x and y and solve for y. So we're going to go x is 3y plus 2. Now we are solving for it. So if we do that, we're going to go x minus 2 is equal to 3y. So we divide both sides by 3. So we've got x minus 2 over 3 equals y. Okay, so therefore we could actually rewrite this as x over 3 minus 2 over 3 is equal to y. So now the y cut is minus 2 over 3. So therefore it is going to be over here. Okay, and we need to solve for y for x to find out where it cuts the x-axis, okay? So what are we going to do? We're going to let y equal 0. So we're going to go x over 3 minus 2 over 3 is equal to 0. So therefore x over 3 is equal to 2 over 3 and we can multiply through by 3 and we get x is equal to 2. So it's going to cross a 2 and therefore the line is going to so I'm trying very hard to draw it straight. Be like that. 
Okay, now if you guys are quite savvy about inverse functions, you would have realized that since these cuts were 2 and minus 2 over 3, that these cuts had to be 2 and minus 2 over 3 as well, just on the opposite axes. Okay, and the, the domain in the range hasn't changed that much because the domain of this is still going to be from minus infinity to positive infinity, and the range is still from minus infinity all the way up to positive infinity. So the domain for this is still x is an element of real values and y is an element of real values is the range. Not much has changed there. Okay, another thing just by the way that you can th realize is that if I had to ask you what is the axis symmetry, what you'd need to realize is the axis of symmetry for this would just be the x equals y line because all we've done, the mirror, these two are mirror images across the x equals y line. Okay, no, they didn't ask it on this page. I'm just pointing it out. Right, oh, there you go. Note the line of symmetry, y equals x. There you go. So now it says, consider the function f of x equals 3x minus 1. So first of all, write down the range and domain. So that's pretty easy. Because this is a straight line, we can immediately say, well, both the domain, the domain is going to be an element, okay, domain. x is an element of real values and the range y is an element of real values. Now it says show that f is a one-to-one -one relation. Okay, now there are a couple ways to do this. The easiest way is actually just to draw it, okay? So if we draw it, it goes through minus one, x, y is minus one, and then if we want to solve for it, let's do it nice and slowly, we're going to go zero is equal to three x minus one, therefore x equals a third, so it's up here and it's a straight line. And remember what we taught you about the fact that, oh, I apologize for this terrible straight line. Let me try again. Um, remember I said to you about the fact that you could have, one of the ways that you could prove that something is a straight, is a function, is using the vertical line test. I'm really not doing very well. Is using the vertical line test where basically we draw a vertical line, we use a ruler to go, across the page, I'll show you now, we're going to use a ruler, there we go, we use a ruler and we go, I'm going to use a highlighter to show you how to do this, so we use a ruler and we go up and down this page, like this with the ruler, and we see if the ruler cuts the graph more than once, and if the ruler cuts the graph more than once, then it is not a function, therefore it is not a one-to-one -one relation, but if it only cuts it once, which in this case it does, then it is a one-to-one -one relation. So now I can just very nicely erase all my highlighters. Okay, next it says determine the inverse function of this. So what do we need to do? We need to swap the x and y and solve for y. And I know these are easy, these are straight lines, but sometimes they ask the easy ones. And then because we skip over it, we think, okay, fine. Well, since they've skipped over it, it must be so easy that we don't have to know it. And in fact, you do. So let's go through it, okay? Swap the x and y. So x is equal to 3y minus 1. Therefore, x plus 1 is equal to 3y. Therefore, y is going to be x over 3 plus a third. Okay, so we know that this point here is minus 1 and that is a third. Therefore, we can say, well, it's pretty obvious, therefore, that the y-axis is going to be a third and the x-axis is going to be what? It's going to be minus 1. It's going to be minus 1. And then we are just going to join the dots. I apologize again. Please use rulers. Okay. How did I know that without solving? Because the x-axis here was minus 1 and the y was a third. And remember when we're having x and y's, that when we're finding the inverse function, what do they do? They swap the x's and y's. So if this value is minus 1, it means this one is going to be minus 1. If this is a third over here, it means that that has to be a third. Right, then it asks you to draw this line of symmetry. Now the line of symmetry is going to be x equals y and that makes sense for the simple reason that we have swapped x and y and solved for y so we've basically moved on both sides of it and unfortunately my graph isn't neat enough for this to show that it is obviously the line of symmetry. Okay, 
So there you go. Now it says graph the function its inverse and state the domain and range of each. Okay, so again, it's a straight line graph. And I'm actually going to skip over this one because time is a plotting. What I'd like to suggest you do is you guys try this one. And then if you have any problems with it, then you can message me and you can ask me to go through it with you. But it really shouldn't be that tricky. Let's move on to the parabola rather. So again in order to get the inverse of a function what do we do we swap the x and y and we solve for y so let's see we've originally we were given x y is equal to 3x squared plus 2x we swap the x and y so x equals 3y squared plus 2 right then we're going to solve for y so the first thing you do is take everything that's not a y onto the other side divide by and then you square root okay so you get plus or minus the square root of x minus 2 over 3. So let's go through an example. We've got the graph. It says draw the following graph stating the domain and range y equals 2x squared. Okay, so that is pretty easy. Okay, we're going to say, okay, fine. The easiest way to do this is to let's just put some values in. Okay, so if x is minus 2, do you agree we get 2 times by minus 2 squared, which is 8? Okay, if x is minus 1, we get 2 times minus 1 squared, which is just 2. If x is 0, y is 0. If x is 1, we get 2. And if x is 2, we get 8. Okay, so that's pretty easy. It's going to be when x is minus 2, y is 8. Oh, it's quite a steep parabola. <laughs> I must fix that. When x is minus 1, y is minus 2, and 0, and 8, and 0. Oh, it's a very steep parabola. So it goes like this. There we go. Okay, now it says, and domain and range. The domain here. This is going to be a little bit different because here the domains and ranges actually change quite considerably. The domain here is all the values for which x is going to be. The graph is going to be valid across the x-axis. And do you agree that this graph is going to carry on forever and ever and ever to the left and forever and ever and ever to the right? So therefore we can say the domain x is an element of real values. That's it. End of story. Cool. The range, however, do you agree that the graph does not exist anywhere down here? Nowhere in the negative y axis does this graph exist. So we could say y is an element of real values for y is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, another way that you could write this is you could say, well, y has got to be greater than or equal to zero and smaller than infinity. That's another way you could write it. Okay, now it says find the inverse of this function and then state its domain and range. Okay, so let's do that. What do we do? We swap x and y and we solve for y. So if we do that, we've got x is equal to 2y squared. Therefore, x over 2 is equal to y squared. Therefore, the square root of x over 2 is equal to y. And remember, this is plus or minus. Okay, so now what are we going to do? Now we need to substitute values in. Okay, and again, this is going to be interesting because let's draw our number lines. This is x and this is y. And I'm going to go minus 1, 0. And then I'm going to go two four okay let's go for two four um no not four eight eight okay and then i'm going to erase the rest of this oh, oh i keep forgetting it does that sorry okay so when x equals minus one do what do you get you get a square root of a negative number and a square root of a negative number does not exist so if this does not exist Therefore, we can say that it's not applicable or it does not exist. So what are we saying? We're saying that the, the inverse does not exist anywhere on the negative first part 
of this, okay? Then if x equals naught, we've got the square root of zero, which is just zero, that works. If x is two, we've got the square root, plus or minus the square root of one. So it's either gonna be plus one or it's gonna be minus one, minus one. And if x is eight, then it becomes plus or minus the square root of four, because 8 divided by 4, 2 is 4, so therefore this becomes 2 or minus 2. Okay, so let's plot this. When x is 0, y is 0. Okay, we're happy with that. When x is 2, y is either minus 1 or plus 1. Okay, plus 1 or minus 1. If x is 8, y is either plus 2 or minus 2. So do you see it's exactly the same shape as the green graph? It's just that it's moved, it's just that it's flipped by 90 degrees. Okay, it's flipped by 90 degrees. So it now looks, I apologize for not going through the points. Oh, let me try once more. I'm sorry. I apologize profusely for the fact that I cannot draw these graphs with these pens and pads. I will try and improve. Okay, right, so it goes like this, more or less. Okay, but now what do we notice about the domain and range this time? This time the domain is from the x equals zero all the way to positive infinity. It has got no negative x values in this red graph. Okay, so now we can say that x is an element of real numbers for x is greater than or equal to zero. And the range, this time the range y is an element of all real values. Okay, but now here's a quick question. Is y a function? Is the inverse actually a function? And the answer to that is no, because if I drew a line, if I drew a line, just use the highlighter again, through it, do you see across here and across here? If I draw a line here, across here and across here. So there is, for every x value, there is more than one y value. This x value's got two y values. This x value's got two y values. And I know that this, if x is zero, y equals zero, seems to think it's one y value, but actually this is two equal points that are at the same point. So therefore we can say that this inverse is not a function. So we say that the inverse, and I need a pen, inverse is not a function not a function and that's important they like to ask that they like to say is this a function or not okay now there you go note that f dash of negative x is not a function right now we can use restrictions to make it look like a function we can use some form of restriction so what could we do to make this a function do you agree that in order for this to be a function it cannot be crossed twice. So somehow we have to cancel out part of this graph. So again, we could think about canceling out either the top half of the graph or the bottom half of the graph. So in other words, if I say we're only going to consider values for y is greater than, y is smaller than zero, okay? So in other words, I say that you are going to draw this graph okay but only for the y is smaller than or equal to zero values then do you agree that only this part of the graph will be drawn okay this bottom half and therefore it would be a function because it wouldn't be cutting the top or i could say that y has to be greater than or equal to zero if that's the case then only this lot is being drawn and therefore it is a function Okay, so how do you, they, they often ask you what restrictions could we use and that's all you have to do. You have to decide what part of this graph do I need to eliminate so that I only cross it once. Okay, now it says sketch f of x equal to x squared for x is smaller than or equal to zero. Okay, and then it says find its inverse. 
Okay, so let us do that. We've got f of x is equal to x squared, but they want x has to be smaller than or equal to zero. So if that's the case, we need to plot some points. Okay, so we've got x and y, let's do minus four. No, let's not. We're only getting as far as 10. So let's go to minus two, minus one, zero, and that's it. If that's the case, then minus two squared is going to be four, minus one squared is going to be one, and zero is zero. So asking us to draw this, just this bit for x squared for x is smaller than or equal to zero. So in that case, when x is minus two, y is four. When x is one, minus one, y is one and then zero. So we've got a parabola that's doing that and that's all they want us to draw. Now they want us to find the inverse. So what do we do? We're going to say, well, this is y, this is y is equal to x squared. So now we swap the x and y's. So we've got x is equal to y squared and now we solve for y, remember that? So we go y equals plus or minus the square root of x y equals plus or minus the square root of x and now we're solving but are we doing it if we have to do it just for the fact that x is small and equal to zero do you see that wouldn't work because then we'd have the square root of negative numbers so that won't work okay but when we solve for the this what are we actually doing we've going to swap the x and y's, we also have to swap this. So we're going to plot only the values for y is smaller than or equal to zero. Okay, so in other words, we can still find the positive values, but we're only going to plot the negative ones. So let's go x, y. Okay, so obviously x cannot be negative because then you get a square root of a negative number and that's imaginary. So let's choose x being 4, x being 1, and x being 0. I'm choosing perfect square numbers, okay, that go up to 10. So in that case, if x is 4, do you agree that y is going to be plus or minus 2? If x is 1, y is going to be plus or minus 1, and that is 0. But we are only plotting the points for y is smaller than or equal to 0. So when x is 4, y is going to be minus 2. When x is 1, y is going to be minus 1. And when x is 0, y is 1. So there you go. That is the inverse that we're drawing. Okay, that there is the inverse. Okay. Right. So now let's talk about the domain and range of these. If you had to go back, back to the blue graph, the actual original graph, do you agree the domain would be x is smaller than or equal to zero, but x is an element of the real values because you can draw it. And the range would be y is smaller than or equal to no y is greater than or equal to zero y is greater than or equal to zero for y is an element of real values okay because y stretches up whereas the red one which is the inverse you've got the domain is x is going to be greater than or equal to zero for x is an element of real values and the range is going to be y is going to be small or equal to zero for y is an element of real values. Okay then, right, now it says graph the function that's inverse and state the domain and range of each of these. Okay, and you've got this thing that says f of x equals x minus 2 squared plus 3. Okay, so it would be tempting to do this just as it is, but it might be easier for you guys to realize that this is a what. I'm hoping that you guys realize that this is a parabola. I'll show you how it's a parabola in a minute, but this is actually in the turning point formula. Okay, 
so if I multiply it out, you'll see now, okay, let's do that. If I go f of x is equal to x minus 2 or squared plus 3, if I multiply this out, it becomes x squared minus 4x plus 4 plus 3, which becomes x squared minus 4x plus 7 which means it cuts at seven and it's a positive graph and it goes up. Okay, everybody happy with that? Now, they've asked us to graph this function, it's inverse and domain. Let me just check that x squared minus four x plus three plus plus four plus three becomes x squared minus four x plus seven, that's right. So what this becomes is it goes, it's a happy graph which goes through plus 7, but its turning point is at 2, 3. Okay, let's find its turning point. Okay, how do you find its turning point? Its turning point is minus b over 2a. So it is going to be, remember its turning point? Turning point is x equals minus b over 2a, which in this case is minus minus 4 over 2 times by 1, which is going to be 2. So the x value of its turning point is 2, and if you substitute it in, I guarantee you it's 3. So therefore, we know that the turning point is x is 2, y is 3, x is 2, y is 3, and we know it cuts the y-axis at 7, so it's going to kind of do something like that. There you go. Okay, so that day is my graph f of x equals x minus 2 plus 3. Now, we x squared plus 3. Okay, right, so now we also wanted to state its domain and range. The domain is the numbers that this graph spreads through on the x-axis. And do you agree it spreads all the way across the negative x-axis and all the way across the positive x-axis? So therefore, we can just say x is an element of the real values, no problem. The range, we're going to say y is going to be an element of the real values, but y has to be greater than or equal to what? This value here is 2, so therefore it's going to be greater or equal to 2. X is 2, sorry, that's a 3. 3, I misread for a second, that's a 3. Okay, now let's look at its inverse. Let's look at its inverse. So how do you solve this? What do you do? You solve your, swap your x and y's and solve for y. And now you will see why they gave it to us in this format. Swapping these and then solving is actually quite difficult. But if we leave it in this format and swap, it's actually a lot easier. Because do you agree this would be originally y? Now we're going to go x is equal to y minus 2 squared plus 3. And we're solving for y, right? So the first thing we do is go x minus 3 is equal to y minus 2 all squared. Then we're going to find the square root. So we're going to go plus or minus the square root of x minus 3 is equal to y minus 2, and then we're going to add 2. So we go 2 plus or minus the square root of x minus 3 is equal to y. There you go. Right, and now the way to do this is what we need to? Well, we can either substitute in values or we could think about this logically. What do we know? We know that this y-axis cuts at 7, but we swap in the x and y. So what does that mean? It means that it's going to cut here at 7 as well. Okay, it's going to cut here at 7. Then what do we also know? That this value where I was 2, 3, let me just write that in red. That's 2, 3, then I'm going to change it to the blue. Do you agree that when we swap it, this becomes 3, 2? So now x is 3 and y is 2. So now we have a parabola that does this. Okay, do you see it? 
So we could put in X values and Y values and X values and then find this, okay? And let's just prove it to you. Let's substitute in X is equal to three. So we've got two plus or minus the square root of three minus three, which is gonna be two plus or minus zero, which is equal to two. So there you go. We've got that point there, three, two. Now, the domain and range of this is going to be the swapping of that, really. So the domain now is what? It is again going to be from this x value across, and that x value is 3. So it's going to be x is an element of real values for x is greater than, greater than, greater than or equal to 3. The range is going to be the what the x domain was, so it's going to be the y is an element of real values. Okay, not too bad, hey? Right, now we're talking about the inverse of the exponential graph. So let's just recap our exponents and logs, and the reason we do that is because exponents and logs are actually inverses of each other. So I know that strictly speaking, again, I'm saying it again, strictly speaking, logs are not part of your curriculum. They are not part of your curriculum, but there is, you need to understand that they are inverse of, inverses of each other, otherwise it is going to, um, okay, just give me half a second, I just need to sort something out, sorry. Right, so exponents and logs are inverses of each other. So even though, strictly speaking, you're not supposed to know logs, okay? You have to understand them because you might be asked to draw the inverse of an exponent graph, which is a log. So the inverse of an exponent is a log. The exponential equation is x is equal to a to the y. The log equation is y is equal to log x base a. Okay, y equals log x base a, where a and y have to be greater than zero and a does not equal one. Okay, right. So, again, the way that I remember it and the way that it might be easier for you guys to remember it is we know that two to the three equals eight. Okay, so it's log eight base two equals three. Okay, so it's two to the three equals eight. So it's a log two to the three equals eight. So that's kind of how I remember it. I know that it's difficult to remember it this way, which is why I remember it this way. And I find that when I told my students that, that they find it easier this way as well. Okay, so let's talk about the inverse of an exponential graph. Let's try an example. So it says draw the following graph setting its domain and range. And the best way to draw these graphs, seriously, grade 12, Let's put some numbers in. So we've got x and we've got y. We've got, let's go, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. Okay. 2 to the minus 2 is going to be 1 over 4. So that's a quarter, right? 2 to the minus 1 is going to be a half. Anything to the 0 is 1. 2 to the 1 is just 2 and 2 squared is 4. Okay, so let's plot that. When x is minus 2, y is ridiculously small. It's a quarter. Okay, when x is minus 1, y is minus a half. Oh, I really must fix that. I don't know how, but I will. Okay, if x is naught, y is 1. If x is 1, y is 2. And if x is 2, y is 4. And you can see the shape of the exponential coming through. And... The trick here, guys, is that if the exponential graph has not been shifted in any way, it's always going to go through this one value here, the number one. Okay, so what is its domain? The domain 
is that do you agree it's getting closer and closer to the y value but never quite touches but it's going to keep going forever it's also going to keep going and it's going to go up and up and up but it's going to keep going to the right forever so the domain is just the x is an element of real values the range well it's never going to quite touch okay the x axis so therefore we can say that y has got to be an element of real values for y is greater than zero it cannot touch this line okay and it cannot have a negative value you can see this if the, if x is negative this is a fraction if x is zero it's one if x is positive then this is positive so you never get y to be a negative number right that's pretty easy. Now you realize that this line here is called an asymptote. An asymptote is a line that we cannot cross, okay? So the asymptote for this graph, asymptote, is the y equals zero line because we're never gonna be able to touch it or cross it, okay? Now it says draw f dash of negative x, f of negative x stating its domain and range. And I'm just going to erase some of this writing so that I'm just going to put it somewhere else. I'll put it over here next to it. The range for this is going to be y is an element of real values for y is greater than zero. Now let's draw f dash of x. Okay, so now we're swapping. So what do we do? We have to swap the x and y and solve for y. So we go x is equal to 2 to the y. And we need to solve for the y. So what did we say? We said 2 to 3 equals 8. Log 8 base 2 equals 3. Okay. So if I had to rearrange that to be 2 to the y is equal to x in that format. Do you agree this becomes log... Um, x base 2 equals y. Okay, so that's the equation that we're going for, log x base 2 equals y. And now what we're going to do is again we're going to substitute in values. So we need to find values when x and y. Okay, and we're again just going to choose the same values we had before. Um, but do you see that, yeah, we've got minus two quarter, minus one half, naught, one, two, four, etc. So do you see that we don't seem to be going into the negatives ever, okay? So I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go minus one, and then I'm going to go zero, and then I'm going to go one, and then I'm going to go two, and then I'm going to go four, okay? I'm cheating because I know that my x values, x and y values should swap as well, so that my y values should be similar to my x values. In fact, let me put a half in here as well. So let me just erase that one, that one, and that one, and then just put in a half, and one, and two, and four. Okay, so if you've got log x base 2, you need your calculators. So if you do this, you should know by now, if you don't already, that you cannot get the negative log value, okay? But let's just put this in and look at this pretty log formula there. So that would be a 2, and now we're saying it's minus 1, minus 1. And what they should give us is a math error. There you go, math error, because there's no such thing as a negative log. So therefore, this is not applicable. Now let's try 0. Okay, zero. So you're going to go log of two and go to zero. And you get, again, a math error. And that's going to be not applicable. And the reason is that this actually is, this time, this is your asymptote. Okay, this dude here is your asymptote. And you cannot get negative values, okay? Let's try x to be a half. So let's try again. I need my calculator out. I'm going to clear. And we're going to go log. And this is a 2. And that is a 0 0.5. And then we're going to get equals. And it's minus 1. So when x is a half, y is 
minus 1. Let's try log of 1. Now grade 12, some of you don't have calculators with this fancy button, so I'm going to show you the other way of doing it. The other way is to realize, sorry, that if you've got log x base 2, it can be rewritten as log x base 2. It can be written as log x all over log 2. So that's the same thing. So and that's one of the laws. So we could actually say that log of 1 base 2 can be written as log 1, close bracket, divided by log 2, close bracket, equals, and that is 0. And that is 0. Log of 2 divided by log of 2 is obviously 1. And then let's do log 4. And I'm going to use the old method where we're going to go log, and this is 2, and that is a 4, and that equals, and that is 2. Right, so now let's plot these. If x equals, the first time we get a value is when x equals a half. When x is a half, y is minus 1. Okay, when x is a half, y is minus 1. Right. When x is 1, y is 0. When x is 2, y is 1. And when x is 4, y is 2. So do you see the graph does this now? Okay, it does that. Okay. And do you see that this time, the y-axis is the asymptote. The y-axis is the asymptote is the asymptote okay which means it never cuts it okay and this value here is one okay so if we had to do the domain and range of this one the domain is going to be what it is all the x values but it cannot be for x equals zero so it's going to be x is an element of real values for x is greater than zero and the range is going to be all the way from minus infinity to positive infinity. So therefore, the range is y is an element of real values. Okay. Right. And that's it for today, grade 12. So we will continue with inverse functions and moving on to... Hang on, let me just see. We're going to talk about exponential and logarithmic functions and then we'll move on to other stuff um, after that. Have a great day. Thank you.